We're going to get right to questions. First one will be from Joe Bettner with the Norman Transcript and then Ryan Aber. Yeah. Spencer, I wanted to ask you just about uh, the relationship, or I guess the chemistry as a quarterback and receiver you built with Marvin Mims, just how he was able to kind of come in this past year and what maybe separated him in your eyes uh, from other receivers to make that kind of jump so early as a true freshman. Yeah, I think uh, when he got here, we just started clicking automatically with chemistry. Uh, we started fall camp and, you know, me and him, you know, a couple of those guys where you just click with better than others. Um, and, you know, Marvin was one of those that stood out to me when I came, when we started fall camp last year, you know, great player, does his job on all occasions, um, can do it all, fast guy, and he just comes to do his job and gives it his all. So he's got, got a lot of work, got a lot of work to do, just like we all do, but, you know, he's doing good. Thanks, Spencer. Okay, we'll actually go to Jason Kersey next since Ryan's not with us yet. Um, Jason and then uh, Eric Bailey. Spencer, I wanted to ask you about Austin Stogner. I know that you developed a relationship with him during recruiting. You guys seem to have a really good connection last year, but can you kind of talk about as, as a friend of his, as, as a teammate of his, what he went through and uh, how, I guess, uh, how excited you are to have him back at 100%? Yeah. Uh, starting out the season, you know, Stog was – as you all saw, one of our biggest targets, you know, one of the best mismatches in the country. Um, you know, one of my favorite targets to throw to, you know, since, you know, we've been throwing at camps with each other since high school. So him and those other guys, you know, making that chemistry together and, you know, building on that and having Stog back, uh, it's good. You know, it's good for the team. It's good for the offense. Okay. Eric Bailey and then Jenny Carlson. Spencer, I know it's extremely early, but what's it been like working with Kennedy Brooks on the practice field? Uh, what can he bring to that? What can he bring to that position group? And uh, are you seeing leadership qualities from him? Yeah, it's good to have KB back. You know, not having him this past year, um, having him back is just it's just nice to have him back. He's he's a vet, knows everything. Um, definitely is a leader in that group. Running back, running backs are very deep this year with with KB, Eric Gray, Marcus Major, Seth, Mikey. Um, got a lot of guys at that position this year. So uh, KB being the oldest of them all, uh, he's definitely leading the way. Spencer, appreciate it. Have a good week. Yes, sir. Thank you. Jenny Carlson and then John Hoover. Hey, Spencer. I'm actually standing in for Ryan Aver today, but he wanted to ask you a little bit about um, the changes that you've seen in your physicality and your, um, you know, just physical makeup this offseason. Lincoln was talking about the fact that you know, you were a basketball guy in high school, so you didn't really do the off-season thing football-wise. And then obviously last year, the off-season gets scuttled by COVID. What, what have you, how have you seen just the work translate? How, how different are you? Weight up, uh, body fat down? I mean, like, what, what are we talking about here? Um, it's kind of funny because this is my first spring ball, my first official spring ball you know, as a player here. Um, so just, you know, that being that, it's going to, give me a lot more time to improve my body, improve my mental game, improve my eating, all that stuff. But, you know, off season wise, I, I, I've been, you know, making jumps, um, feel stronger, feel faster, uh, put on some weight up to 210 now, uh, lost a couple percent body fat, still got to, you know, work on that, of course, but um, I got to sharpen up in all, all different places. So I still got work to do and still have goals I, I need to make. Go to John Hoover and then Bob Prisbillo. Hey, Spencer, uh, you came in and played as a redshirt freshman, really put up some big numbers. Marvin came in and played as a true freshman, put up some big numbers. Can you kind of maybe describe how football has changed to where being a freshman anymore, being a redshirt freshman, not that big a deal? And does that project onto the freshman receivers that are coming in like Cody and Mario? Yeah, you know, how, how, how coaches up here look at it, how we all look at it. If you're a baller, you're a baller. So no, no matter what age you are, no matter you know how much experience you have in a system or in college overall, if, you, if you're a good football player, you're going to go out there and make plays for your team. So um, luckily, Marvin and I were one of those younger guys last year to make plays, and I'm sure there will be more this year. Uh, Mario looks very good. Cody looks good. Uh, a, lot, a, lot of, a lot of freshman receivers look good. So I'm um, excited to see what those guys can do for us leading throughout spring ball and um, throughout the offseason. Appreciate it. Bob Prisbillo and then Austin Kurtwright. Yeah, Spencer, with all the uncertainty with Trajan Bridges last year, was it tough to maintain that 
chemistry and how excited are you to have him full a uh, full go now with no questions asked yeah me and trage will always have that chemistry um me and him have some of the best chemistry on the team uh in my opinion just having him back it's such a such a mismatch on that you know that outside and you know he, he's gonna do his job and get open and, and make those big time catches so um you know like i said about marv you know he's got a lot of work to do like we all do but you know we're gonna keep keep striving for perfection and, and keep pushing and trade just look really good so far austin kurt wright and then james hale hey spencer i uh, wanted to ask you about caleb williams uh what have you seen from him this spring and how have you sort of uh served as that leader for him yeah no he's got he's got a good uh skill set talented player um confident um you know, he's done a pretty good job, you know, up to now. Um, me being the older guy, I try to kind of take him under my ring, wing and, you know, teach him the ropes of everything and, and you know, kind of help him throughout everything. Him and Ben Harris and Carson Grews, all these all these younger guys. So it's definitely a new new quarterback room and, you know, love all the guys in there. James Hale and then Brandon Drum. You know, it's always interesting uh, when spring gets started. You guys have had two practices now, Spence. You're the leader of this team offensively, and you've been going against the defense. What's been your impressions of your unit and how you've competed against the defense in the first two workouts? You know, first two practices have been very, you know, high energy, um, a, lot of, a lot of competition, and a lot of back and forth. Uh, both sides of the ball look really good. Um, some days the offense will, will get the defense. Some days the defense will get us, but... Um, iron sharpens iron, and, you know, we both help each other improve. Thanks, man. Let's go to Brandon Drum and then Josh Calloway. Yeah, speaking of wide receivers, uh, and you were talking about Trajan Bridges earlier, uh, can you talk about uh, how Mario Williams has started out his, you know, the winter workouts and how he's looked uh, in the first couple of practices? Yeah, he's looked very good. Uh, probably the fastest, one of the fastest guys on the team for sure. Quickest probably. Um, his get off the line is is really impressive. Um, you know, he can catch the ball, run routes, get open, block. He could do it all. So take back punts, kicks. Excited to see all the factors he brings to this offense. Thanks, Spencer. Okay, just a couple more. Josh Calloway and then Lee Benson. Yeah, Spencer, just want to ask about Seth McGowan. Just, I guess, what you've seen from him in the early goings of the spring and what kind of a jump you think he can make from last year to next year for you guys? Yeah, from what I've seen from Seth, he's getting bigger, stronger, and faster. Um, dude is throwing up crazy numbers in the weight room, as usual. Um, running fast times, you know, running big plays, catching the ball. He's doing everything out of the backfield. Uh, also, when we kick him out to empty formations and stuff like that, he's just, you know, a tool you could use to, you know, exploit the defense in many ways. So he's he's been a you know, great weapon for us so far this spring. And time for one more. Let's go to Lee Benson. Hey, Spencer. I remember after the Cotton Bowl, uh, you and your teammates were pretty confident, already looking ahead to 2021. So for you, I know it's early, but what do you need personally to accomplish this spring to ensure that you and your teammates are on schedule or maybe even ahead of schedule, get it going, going into the summertime so you guys are on, on track to accomplish those goals that you have for yourself this season? I think the thing with us is just not looking too far ahead and just focusing on day by day. Um, you know, last spring was taken away from us. So, you know, playing that season with the whole, you know, spring of no football, it, it, you could see, you know, how we weren't, you know, on the same chemistry for those first couple games. But I think just going through spring ball with each other, competing, going hard, having fun, having great energy and focusing on the, on the little things and just stacking, stacking days and going day by day, that, that'll, that'll help us improve a lot. So, you know, Couple days in the spring already. Um, 13 more practices, trying to have 13 great more practices. That's the goal.